Hi guys, my name's Tudor. I'm the man on the Silver Mountain and welcome back. Now today I wanted to talk about fake news because firstly it's been a huge thing that we've not actually really talked about a huge amount on this uh, on this channel in various different ways. Um, but also because someone actually came to me and uh, asked me about where I get my information from when it comes to a news story that's kind of just breaking, just broken. Um, what do I pay attention to and what don't I? And uh, as a result, I kind of wanted to go into that because one of the things that stands out to me is that fake news can be incredibly insidious. It can be very, very easy to buy into. Um, and like certain individuals that I won't name, but they know who they are, who sometimes watch these videos, very rarely. Um, but when they do, they know who they are and uh, where they will skim down a page and, uh, you know, all they'll do is read the headline this clickbaity headline that probably doesn't bear an awful lot of resemblance to any of the information that's actually in the story in the article um but they'll they'll read the headline and they'll think that they're informed when they're not first off first big thing regardless of where you're getting your news from read the damn articles if it's a video watch the video you know all of it um just because otherwise you're not getting all the information you know, the same way that even though, um, like, there are a couple of videos that I'll turn on, hit the thumbnail or whatever else, and then I'll go, oh, this isn't actually what I thought it was about. And so then I'll kill the video or whatever else. But for the most part, even if I don't like what's being said, even if it irks me, even if it's inaccurate, even if it, and I know it to be inaccurate, even if it's just troubling, I'll still watch the whole video just in case there's something later on that probably should have been said earlier on or something like that that the then expands on what the topic is. Um, so it's, it's firstly, if you're going to consume media to keep yourself informed, consume all of it. Don't pick and choose. Don't be selective. Just focus on everything for the time being. We'll get on to being more selective in a minute. But if you're looking at an article, read the whole article. If you're looking at a video, watch the whole video. If you're listening to a podcast or the radio or something like that, listen to all of it. Um, because otherwise you're going to miss stuff. Things are going to be taken out of context. You're not going to have the whole picture. You know, it'd be trying to judge what the Mona Lisa is by only looking at one tiny bottom corner which has no real element of her face or the background or anything else in it. You know, you can't judge like an entire topic you can't work with an entire topic without seeing all of it the next thing that I would say is don't worry so much about kind of where the news comes from because one of the things that, that stands out and, and what I mean by that is uh, the actual kind of news outlets and things like that so if it comes from the Washington Post, if it comes from the, Huff the Huffington Post, if it comes from uh, the Daily Mail, if it comes from the Sun, if it comes from the Times, if it comes from a YouTube channel like Rebel Media or the Young Turks or Philip DeFranco, um, if it comes from any of those places, then firstly, fine. But secondly, even if there's an ideological spin on it, even if it's tripe, even if it's a complete mess of an article or something like that, a complete mess of a video if they are then also agreeing with other elements from that news story that have been echoed in every single place number of people killed where something happened who was involved you know all of those kind of things then you can work with that because those are obviously the solid pieces of information now they could very well not be solid it could not be particularly well sourced but no one you you with what's in front of you can only judge so much so when it comes to um, pieces of information from news sources look for the information that all of them agree on any other information take with a pinch of salt if you want to quote it fine but be prepared to make a retraction if you're um, willing to completely disregard it in a very active and obvious way then if that turns out to be true, be ready to then actually accept that based on evidence or at least be willing to scrutinise the evidence. 
then the next thing, and this is something that stands out to me outside of just news as well. Um, but if you've got one thing that was told to me by one of my psychology uh, teachers when I was back in um, in college was if you look at some information and it doesn't have like like a study or something else like that and it doesn't have university st seals on it if it doesn't have uh, a peer review on it if it doesn't have um, some element of someone's name on it that you can check on um, if it doesn't have references if it doesn't have something leading off there to elsewhere then feel free to use it but don't accept it as 100% truth and it's a good thing that we don't do that because when you've got uh, pieces of information talking about new therapies or old therapies alternative medicine for instance where they've got their case studies that yeah one person felt better when you put a crystal on their face great good for you um, every you, you know, but there's no nothing there to verify. It hasn't been peer reviewed. It hasn't been worked through. It's not a um, a replicated uh, situation that can, you can easily replicate with anybody to solve the same issue. Um, whilst then you look at pieces that have government funding, uh, government funded um, commissions for the pieces of research with seals on it from to demonstrate where it's come from that have been peer reviewed that have been worked on by universities and therefore overseen by the, the people in charge at the university, you know, they may still be issues. Then nothing can be 100% verified by you sat behind your computer, sat in front of your TV, sat looking into your phone. But what you can do is try and make sure that you are the best informed possible, which includes checking to see where stuff has come from. So with all of that in mind, how do I decide personally? Well, as I've said before, I try to hold this middle ground. And that means that if I'm in the middle, then I can see everything around me with a good perspective on it. In which case, I'm willing to take information from all sides and weigh it up. So if several different channels, several different news outlets all agree that... I don't know, World War Three is about to start because a, um, a warhead flew off from somewhere and hit somewhere else. Okay, great. Where do they, what, what, where, you know, what, what are the elements that they agree on? Well, they agree that it all came from this country. They all agree that it came and landed in this country. They all agree that the official statistic being put out by that country in terms of death toll is this. They all agree on the direct communique from the country that fired the warhead in the first place. You know, if they agree on all of those pieces of information, then anything else that's opinion, anything else that is unverified, um, anything else that has no evidence or proof to it can be disregarded. In which case, the reason why fake news takes hold so effectively is because there's always a grain of truth. There are always elements of truth in those stories. You know, that's one of the reasons why the clickbait headlines work on so many people, because the clickbait headlines have an element of truth in them. They have an element of interest in them that could directly relate to your life. They have all of those things, and so you go, hmm, that would be an interesting thing to know about because it might affect me. It probably won't affect you at all. But the clickbait headlines work because it's either because it's it's this is going to be interesting because of this reason, or it's going to be interesting because it could affect me directly. And that's why people get drawn in. That's why people get picked up by it. And so when it comes to, to kind of certain groups trying to squash fake news, I mean, the thing with Facebook is probably the most interesting where they're trying to actively find ways to weed out all of the, the fake news. It's not going to work. Because they're all... all they need to do clickbaity headline, misrepresentation of facts, um, but all of the other facts that are in that piece, you know, the actual facts are going to be there. But then representing opinion as fact, representing something, uh, a negative outlook as fact, um, or a positive outlook as fact, when there's no evidence for either, um, those are the things that are going to 
get under people's skins, into people's heads. So when I'm researching something for a video for you guys, the stuff that I tend to look at is, where's it come from? Who's talking? Um, are there statistics involved? Can I check the statistics? Are they in some way verifiable? Is there a, a university or a government seal on it so that I can see where it's come from? Um, are there any other elements of the story that are agreed and corroborated by other sources? You know, there's a lot of cross-checking and things like that. And it's one thing that actually kind of bugs me um, about some of the various news outlets on YouTube especially. And uh, that is that where I potentially want to sit down and watch a video on some of these things. And they start bringing up all of these statistics, all of these other things and they might have a tiny source on the edge of an infographic that, that you can't really read, in, in, even in 1080p. You can't really read it in the bottom, bottom corner of the screen, um, even if you blow the video up to full screen. And they don't stick their, their sources and things in the, uh, the description either. When they're, actu they're actually... They're not just providing commentary. They're not just providing... Um, information as a as a flat info source they are reporting on a story that they then quote from somewhere else but then they don't stick the thing in there in the first place like in in the videos of mine where i'm talking about a very specific article or a very specific thing even with the death stranding video last week where i very specifically um said this is the trailer that we're looking at down in the description there it was sometimes i'll admit I'll do it during the week, record the video, and then when it comes to the weekend, when I do the, the majority of my uploads for the following week, I'll be sat there, I'll be putting in the metadata, I'll be like, right, that one's done, move on, and I'll forget about it. There have been a couple of times when you guys have actually come and called me called me out on it, saying, Where, where's the source for, for this thing? Where's this thing that you're talking about? And then I've gone back and put it in. You know, um, it, it, it can be something that, that is easy to forget about you know and it can cause problems for people especially ones that want to challenge you or follow up on what you're saying but again I'm also only one person when certain other news outlets have entire teams to do that to, to do the metadata to put that stuff in the description and yet they still don't and that to me is always suspect you know if you've got a, a news source if you've got people who can and should be listing where the information is coming from that they're including in an article, and then they just don't. You know, even even um, like online articles for I don't know Huff Post, The Guardian, uh, The Times, whatever um, articles that we've been through in this uh, on on this channel in the in videos, um, most of those at least have certain hyperlinks throughout the article that allow us to try and go and find something else. Some of them we have we, we've been kind of scathing towards because the link has only taken us to another article from the same news outlet and no source, which then we've been annoyed at, or at least I have. But beyond that, it's a case of there's a load of stuff that, that sits out, stands out as, as kind of red flags, yeah? Information that's in an article that isn't corroborated anywhere else. St information being presented from a study or a piece of research or a case case file or something like that that doesn't have any seals on it, doesn't have any approvals on it, doesn't have any names attached to it. Um, that's That stands out. Um, but the, the biggest thing that I can say is take in as much information as possible. Cross-check it, compare it and then move forward on, on what's agreed on that there seems to be evidence for that you can interact with, that you can test, you know? Um, and then anything else beyond that is superfluous and kind of unhelpful. But also, if you can't prove it, if there's no evidence for it, it's not worth wasting your time over. So those are my, those are my thoughts on, on fake news and, and how to kind of get around it and try and find the nuggets of truth. But obviously, as I said, from behind a PC screen, from behind a TV screen, on your phone, it can be very, very difficult to uh, to actually manage to get to those places. 
you know, to, to always be 100% on the information that you, you've got your hands on. And when it comes to those issues, when it comes to, to being in that place where you're behind a PC screen, where you're looking stuff up, you're reading through it and you're going through it and you're trying to find those points of commonality, prepare to make a mistake. If you do make a mistake, own up to it, apologise, correct yourself and move on. You know, if there's evidence that you've made a mistake, if there if new evidence comes to light that something odd has transpired, then fine, but you're only human. Make the best of it. Be prepared to, to tackle that position and move on. Because otherwise, you know, you're, you're going to run into problems. But again, research, it doesn't take an awful lot of time, of, uh, an awfully long time to do um, if you know what you're looking for. And so, you know, if I'm doing research for a video topic, then, you know, the topic is what I'm going to be searching for. And I'm going to be pulling up as many pieces of information just to check in on things, just the odd thing here and there. And then that might prompt more questions. And then I'll go and look into more stuff. But again, as long as I can pull up all of those things that are being agreed on, that are being um, t drawn out from every article, every piece of media that I'm consuming, that, yes, this is part A, this is part B, this makes sense here, this makes sense there, they all say the same thing, great. Those are the things that I need to pay attention to, and everything else can effectively be ignored. So, there you go, my thoughts. But otherwise, guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts on fake news and how you guys get around it, if you even bother, if you've still stayed connected with the news enough to, to want to engage with it. Um, otherwise, I hope this has been helpful uh, to one extent or another, and uh, I'll see you in the video later. Take care. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, then please drop us a like, share this video, and subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the video later. Take care.